What's up, everybody? I'm Evil Rabbit, and we're here on a set of courses staring at my S14, the Evil Rabbit S14, usual suspects on that window. Some uh, new seats in there, new steering wheel, a little bit of a new paint scheme. So if you guys have seen this car before, this is my S14 I've been working on. It went from a V8 to now it's turboed. <clears throat> been having a lot of fun with it, finally getting comfortable with the, the way the car handles and the suspension and everything like that. But today we're going to talk about why recently I've been getting so much hate about this my handbrake. I'm getting a lot of hate recently about people saying that they wouldn't want to chase me because I pulled a handbrake in all the turns or you know using the handbrake too much and stuff like that. So I don't understand why I'm getting so much hate about it. Now I understand I may pull a handbrake more than I probably should. It was a habit that I'm tr slowly getting to you know away from. But if you watch pro drivers like you know in FD and tandem when you're when they're behind they're using their handbrakes a lot. They do use their handbrakes especially if you're behind a car that has either less power than you and you surge and you got to stop or and keep angle and you don't want to lock up the front so use the handbrake to keep the car and slow it down as well as the foot brake to keep the car in angle so handbrake is utilized in drifting for many different reasons high speed initiations is one if you're in a high speed initiation and you don't have enough uh, speed or you know gearing or anything to flick the car hard with a weight transfer use a handbrake to kick it in now flicking it in a, in a turn all the time to get it to rotate is a habit of the car sometimes when I'm in some of these cars that I'm not, you know, too familiar with, I'll use the handbrake to get to rotate more until I get more comfortable in the car. So a lot of people are saying, oh, I hate to chase Evil Rabbit because he uses the handbrake in all the turns. Well, I'm not comfortable in that car. I don't know how the car is going to react. I'm in the lead position or I'm in a, a train and I don't want to screw the train up. So I use a handbrake. So case in point, this S14 that we have here, my Evil Rabbit S14, I'm very comfortable with this car. We're going to take this car out today and I'm going to show you that with a car that I'm very comfortable in, with the tune and everything like that, I don't need to use my handbrake to transition. I don't use my need my handbrake to drift most of the track. I'll use it to initiate over a certain high-speed corner, but then I don't need it. I'll use it sometimes, maybe to adjust, but most of the time I won't be using it. So we're going to go take this car to Aussie Driftland. I've been having a lot of fun with some of my friends, ripping some of these uh, car pack cars. This is going to be one of them, getting them down, getting them very comfortable, very solid, very stable cars. So the, the Evil Rabbit S14 is definitely going to be one of them. Whoa, network fail. Okay. So the Evil Rabbit S14 is definitely one of them, and it's a very cool car for me. It does have a, a couple different paint schemes, you know, nothing major. A little white and blue without the NRGs on the side. So it is kind of a cool car, and I will be excited once I get these cars dialed in fully and out there for everybody to drive with my, you know, custom Evil Rabbit NRG seats in there. So we're going to go take this car out here today, and we're going to go rip it. Like I said, we're going to go rip it at Aussie Driftland. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and Twitter, all of which are found in the description box below. May have to adjust the audio. I'm unsure. I don't want to blow your eardrums by the sound of the car. So like I said, it's gone from V8 to now turboed. So we are going to go. we got a whole slew of tires in here. We're going to throw on some comp tires. Gonna drop them down to about 20 in the rear, and we're gonna do 25s in the front, and we're gonna leave everything else how it is. I think we're good. I don't think I'm gonna blow your jumps out. So, like I said before, I utilize handbrakes sometimes, and probably more so than I should. But we're gonna show you today that in a car that I'm very comfortable in, I don't really need it. So we're going to use it to initiate over the jump. Then we're just going to use left foot braking, a little bit of clutch kicking to get us around the corner. We'll tap the brake, a little clutch kick to flick the car. A little left foot brake, a little lock up, I need to adjust the brake pressure. On the clutch, a little brake transition. So. I don't always need handbrake to drift or transition. It depends on the car. Like, I'm hitting those clips very comfortably and very easily without my handbrake. So this is a very slowy track, so you don't really need, you know, a handbrake at all. So, but if I'm in chase position and I feel like I'm surging too much and left foot brake might lock up my brakes a little bit, with the downshift I don't need to, I will pull the handbrake a little bit to stay in angle and not have to worry about hitting, you know, the lead driver. So, I basically am not understanding why I've been getting so much hate recently. If you guys, you know, 
have a problem with me using a handbrake and stuff like that. It's just the nature of maybe it's that car. Maybe I'm not comfortable with that car and I need to use handbrake to keep an angle or I'm chasing too much and I'm surging but I want to stay in angle without, you know, hammering on the brakes or maybe the brakes aren't set up correctly and if I hit the brakes I'm going to straighten out and come out of drift. So it's just, there's, there's many different reasons to use it. So as you can see we're just ripping my 14 right now here in Drift, Drift Land Aussie, one of my new favorite tracks to shred with my friends. So we're going to try and run the wall. So this 14 is definitely so much stabler and has gotten so much better recently. Try to run this outside edge. Oh, a little wall graze. So for those people that you know use handbrake all the time, it's it's not a bad thing. Yes, if you rely on handbrake, then it's a problem. It becomes a crutch, and it was a it's definitely something that I've been using for a lot in Forza and stuff like that. Ooh, right in that zone, right we go. And it became a crutch, and I became so used to using it that it's became pretty much a bad habit. And I'm uh, slowly breaking that habit, getting more comfortable with uh, the people I'm driving with, more comfortable in some cars, and especially now building my own cars, changing up suspensions, physics, and everything like that. I'm getting used to what cars I can not use a handbrake on and what cars I need to use a handbrake on. I'll try and do this without a handbrake. Oh! <laughs> Ow. <laughs> We're going to try that again because I feel like I can actually get that. But like I said, I'm getting more comfortable with cars. What I can, Which cars I need to use them on, which cars I don't. You know how I should use them and stuff like that. I think I may have broken the car. We gotta get some speed up in here. Oh yeah, my car is not, my wheel is not straight. We have broken something. Oh, this car's not gonna work. Oh, all right, we need to go to pits. I broke the car. Gotta have damage on. My steering wheel is not straight. So we're gonna go try and get this jump again without a handbrake and see what we can do. Too much, too much, too much, too much. Ugh. So that's a point where a handbrake is definitely should be used to help initiate on that jump. I'm sure I can flick it a lot harder and maybe actually get the transition correctly, but I feel like it's just much easier to get the high speed entry with a handbrake. So just wanted to throw this car around give you guys a little glimpse of one of the cars that will be in my upcoming car release for you guys to download and thrash around yourselves got this got a 350z as well as a couple of real cars that my friends drive like the dave's heckin good boys s14 a couple other uh, 180 sx's another s14 i think i'm gonna have uh s13s in there just a bunch of cars. I may release a couple cars here very shortly. Let's see if we can get this jump again. Oh. Nope. Lost power. Need handbrake. A couple cars here. Maybe the Z and the 14. So that I can run some public lobbies with these. Because you guys got to have them in order to get in the lobbies. So. I know a lot of people want to see some modeling stuff and things on that nature on cars and I feel like I'm going to start building another car here very shortly and maybe do a full series on the start of the car, which car I pick, where I get parts from, how I'm using them, what software I'm using, doing livery and stuff like that here on the channel and do basically a whole car build here on a set of Corsa for the channel. So if that's something you guys are very interested in seeing, let me know down in the comments if there's a specific car you think I should build let me know a car that you might want to see in a car pack whether it be like an fc an fd rx7 another style 14 maybe an s15 s14.5 or whatever Just let me know down in the comments because i'm looking for some other cars to throw out there because it's very awesome for me to have a couple cars out now that uh, I have a bunch of my friends testing and everybody enjoys them. The cars shred. These cars definitely party. Been having a lot of fun with them. So make sure you guys follow me on all social media, all of which are found in the description box below. Just a quick little blip and look at the 14 and well, 
if you've noticed, smoothness of steering and uh, lack of handbrake is definitely a thing with this car on this track. It is a flowy track, but I am still using brake and clutch kick and stuff to rotate the car. The car feels dialed. So, as always, I thank you guys for watching. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track. Almost.